Hey everybody, this is Jack CSA, and I'm coming to you here with Decisive Campaigns, Warsaw to Paris. This game is a favorite of mine, and I don't think it's as popular as it should be. If you are the type of person ready to upgrade from a Panzer Corps or a Unity of Command, but you're not quite ready for War in the East, this game is perfect. It's one of the first ones I got. It's one of my favorites. This mission right here, this is the Case White scenario, the German invasion of Poland. You'll notice you get NATO counters, and it's really intuitive. There's a couple things that I'll be showing off that should help out, but it's easy. The only note I would say is that it is regimental scale, so if you notice... You will have some counters to move. There are also attached artillery. You will have aircraft you have to manage. You have multiple levels of headquarters, flak, engineers, things like that. But it's a really cool war game. Once you start playing it, you kind of get a feel, and you don't really have to do combat factor, math, and things like that. So to get started, I just want to show off, if you click on a unit, it brings up, in general, what the unit is. These numbers down here in the left are pretty easy to understand once you get a hang of it. So this one right here, this is 1st Regiment of the 207th Division. It has 100 action points, so the action points determine how far it can move, um, how it will be able to go, how many fights it can take part in. If you don't have enough action points, it's going to limit how many rounds of combat you get when you do fight. Fuel right here. One of the things I like about this scenario that's less daunting than a war in the East is it's one campaign. So you invade Poland, that's it. Fuel is not super important if you are the Germans, you're on the attack. But when we get to the French scenario and you do um, Case Yellow, Fuel becomes a lot more important. This right here, integrity, it's just what the tooltip says, and there are these nice little tooltips if you hover over most things. If it gets below 60%, it can break. And one of the strategies using this engine is wearing down units to get them to completely shatter and route, and hopefully, if things go well, I'll be showing that off. This one right here is readiness. The lower that is, the worse a unit will fight. Kind of like with integrity, they get ground down. Units will have to take rests. And in a shorter scenario like this, not a big deal. But for some of the longer ones, units will have to be placed in reserve. Experience. More unit fights, the better it gets at fighting. Pretty simple. Morale. It says how willing it is to retreat. There are cards and things you can do to make that go up. And then entrenchment. So those are the basics. And you'll notice, if I zoom in, there's numbers here. These aren't quite combat factors. It's actually a stacking system to represent that you just can't put 100 divisions in one hex. That's too many men, too many machines. It would get clogged. It wouldn't fight effectively. Overstacking hexes will um, actually increase the amount of casualties, and often decrease combat efficiency. So don't do that. Um, other than that, it's really intuitive. You have a lot of options. So for this one, I'm doing everything default. Basic, boring, simple, but you can have Britain send over tanks. You can have Russia break the promise to Germany and not come in, you can have all sorts of things happen, and that is played out by cards. I'm just doing the basic scenario. Most of the cards are gone. We do have some power points here. If you put it in campaign mode, you get a lot more options, but I'm just showing off the basics. Other than that, you can view the order of battle. We have two army groups, Army Group North and Army Group South. Army Group North, we have Third Army and Fourth Army. Third army is over here, and in general their battle plan is just to drive straight down south and go to the east side of Warsaw. Over here, maybe go to Bialystok, try to get that, Grodno if it comes up, and then 21st Corps, 
The stated goal is to cut the Danzig corridor here and break Danzig off from the rest of Poland, but in all honesty, that one shouldn't be too hard. They're going to come down and support 4th Army. And so this is 4th Army, and if we look here, we got the 19th Corps, and we get mobile units. So we have our motorized, we have our panzers, and they're ready to strike right at the heart of Poland. They cut across this axis here and drive right to Warsaw. That's their goal. Third Army will support them best they can. Down here we have Army Group South and the main thrust. So we have 8th Army, and if you notice I can click on any core and click on its HQ, click on its HQ to jump around. You'll notice that it highlights, so it's easy to keep units together. An 8th Army is infantry. It is meant to support, you get like one little motorized regiment, meant to support 10th. 10th Army, they are really your bruisers, and this is the mobile units. These are all your panzers, all your motorized, and they are meant to drive right through this axis up and come around Warsaw. And you'll notice then the plan is basically to slice northeast with 10th Army, come down with 3rd, and cut off Warsaw. Now Warsaw is actually in this game a supply generating point, so it's hard to fully isolate. The other ones are over here on the eastern edge of the map. But by doing that, it will cut off most of these units in the west. And that's going to be our operational goal, is to come through this way, pocketing what units we can, and break Poland into two halves, east and west. And if all these western units get pocketed, there's nothing they can do. They don't have enough in the east. The game is actually determined by victory points. You'll notice, can click on the strategic map tab, Right now we have 19, we need 49, you can click on a hex, and I'll tell you up here, so Warsaw is 10 victory points, it is the prize, but anything with this nice little target here, we want those cities. That's what's going to advance our goals, and in the end decide if we win or lose. And this game, it knows Germany's going to win, but you have a turn limit, each turn is two days, and it's, it's a race against the clock. So it's not if you get repelled or not, it's can you win fast enough to be efficient. Other than that, let's get started. So first thing, and it is a bit of clicking, but you get used to it real quick, you don't even notice after a point, is recon. So over here we have Flieger Corps 6, and it's a reconnaissance group, that's really all it's good for. You can use it in attack, you can set it to intercept, but if things go well, there won't be much of a Polish Air Force in the future anyway. So I'm going to click recon, and I want to know more about these units near the front line and any of their reserves. If you click on any hex, you can see up here in the corner that there are recon points. And if you have 400, you see full information. Now we have it for some of these units, but not all. Since 3rd Army is over here in support, 4th has to break through. There's not a ton of infantry here. It's really going to be 19th Corps smashing through with mobile units. And I don't want to get my panzers destroyed. I don't want to have trucks destroyed. So I need to know what I'm doing. I need to know what sort of reserves are down here. So I'm going to click this, click Air Recon, and since some of these units have 400, I'm actually going to go a little bit behind and take a look. Well, now I can see they have a line that extends further than I thought. And if you have a unit go forward when you don't know what's on there, you can bump into an enemy unit and it will ambush you and it gets a bonus for a surprise attack. So be very careful when probing forward and not knowing what you're doing. You'll notice I still have 70 action points. So I'm going to do some more reconnaissance for 4th Army over here. 8th and 10th and the other armies down south, they actually have their own unit. So I'm not super concerned about burning all of this for the north. They will have their air support. They'll be fine. All right. So now I've done reconnaissance. It's time to break open a hole. 
So there's two main types of air wings. There are these ones with a B. Those are tactical bombers and level bombers. You can use them against cities, and they're much better for infantry. And then, of course, there are the dive bombers. And so if I click a unit, that's going to give me recon. Click a unit, click air, I can bring up a whole list. The ones with a D, dive bombers. They are good for taking out tanks and taking out things in the open. So, taking a look, I'll notice that Poland has some tankettes split amongst their infantry, but really, right here, opposing 4th Army, they don't have anything that can stand in our way. So, I'm not going to worry about using the dive bombers yet. I'm going to see what crops up. Now, right here... We have a city, and like I said, very intuitive game. It's a city. You don't want to attack with mobile units in it. You don't want tanks in it. So for now, I'm going to leave this cavalry brigade alone. I'm going to focus on attacking the 9th division, and if I can, start breaking through the 15th division. And so I'm going to target the 9th right here, their 3rd regiment and do an airstrike with, let's try the level bomber. You'll notice with the stack, I can actually assign more, but I shouldn't have to. We should get a breakthrough. Click attack. You get a little animation. Now, this wasn't super effective because they have some anti-air. Regimental artillery will work as anti-air, and both of these units will be covered because they're adjacent. So change of plans, not that it's a huge deal, but I'm going to shift over here and go after 1st Regiment of the 9th. And it attacks, and you'll notice not great results, but a little bit better. We took out um, one unit of machine guns, and if you click here, units are bundled up um, it's not as detailed as War in the East. You're not killing rifle squad by rifle squad. You're killing groups. So we got one unit of their machine guns. 50. Um, yeah, they're not going to fight as well. Now, right here, all of this is open fields. So next step in the preparation, I'm actually going to do artillery bombardments. Again, could armor just take this on? Yes, but I want to show you guys how to prep an attack, because as the campaigns go, and as you get into Case Yellow, and then the Operation Sea Line scenario, it's going to get much tougher. So I'm going to just assign the 20th Division's Divisional Level Artillery, one regiment of artillery, it should be fine, click Attack, and much more effective. 300 men... And you'll notice it did damage to their readiness, it dropped, their integrity, and their morale. It also lowered their level of entrenchment. So I'm just going to continue and hit their entire line with artillery. Good results there, another 300. And see what we can crack open in preparation for the attack. Let's use some core artillery. And you'll notice the core artillery is much stronger than divisional level. It's additional resources. That time it had 700 men, and we took down, it looks like, some of the anti-tank weapons. Yep, we took down some Bofors 37mm AT guns, which is good because we will be attacking with tanks. Last unit, let's see. If you hit all, you can actually see multiple units, what's going on. I'm going to just attack with 32nd Division's artillery. Click attack. 200 men, not super effective. Now, what I can do is attack here with the motorized because this will be kind of a pain with the flank. Units, you'll notice, do exert a zone of control. 
And so if we want a full range of movement to slice down and try to cross the river at Bromberg or Kulm or Groudens, we will need some freer range of movement. So I'm going to use some 4th Army artillery and see what we can do if we can shake anything loose. And we did. So 300 men. And with the cavalry, they actually have some armored cars, but they won't fight as well in the city. That lowered their entrenchment. These are motorized units, but they're motorized infantry. So with that, I think we're about ready. Let's fan out a little bit. So one thing in this game, you actually get a bonus for concentric attacks. If you click move, it'll actually show you any place you can move and if you can do an attack or not. Like if I move over here, it's going to cost 90 AP to move. That won't work. That won't allow me to attack. But if I move here, it's only 45 and you get the red arrow and it shows you the movement points. It always lets you know how many action points you have. And because of stacking, in this scenario, because it's the two days, it's a little bit different. I'm going to see if I can even... Yeah, I can't bring a third regiment to bear without overstacking anyway, and in fact, two regiments will be slightly overstacked. But let's use second and third regiments with first in reserve, ready to blow through the gap, and attack. So you'll notice we were overstacked a little bit. We lost 300 men, but we took down 700 and a bunch of support units, and we did shift them out of the town. Also, it was so successful, we still have a lot of movement points. And they do get to go in and occupy anything they take, and I'm going to happily do so. Now... Right here, you could try to cut the Gondanza Corridor with 4th Army. I'm going to leave that to 3rd. I'm going to leave it to these Grenzers and the other line units. I'm going to keep bullying this unit, because you'll notice we don't have full recon as it moved, but its readiness is down, its integrity is down, and I'm just going to do a follow-up attack. Now... Third regiment only has 25 action points. I'm going to see what I can do. I do have first in reserve. If I need it, I'll use it, but hopefully they can shift it by itself. You also get a bonus for sticking within your division. It is kind of like War in the East. If that you are mixing units and getting these weird hodgepodges, it will reduce your effectiveness. And a great result. We did run out up here, so 3rd Regiment, they ran out of gas, they were tired, they didn't have enough action points, but 2nd Regiment, they just kept pushing on, and so now we have that Cavalry Brigade completely in disarray, they've been shifted off, and we're going to move in. And Light Forest, not as effective, but that unit is so close to breaking, You'll notice these stack numbers almost correspond to combat power. You kind of have to estimate. The game actually works with the individual combat factors, like units of cavalry, the anti-tank, things like that, fighting against each other. But it's close enough. Let's see what we can do. Lost 100 men, but pushed it even further, and it can still be followed up on. So these motorized and panzer units, they really get their money's worth. Not enough to shift it off, but killed 200 more, and this unit is close to collapse. So now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to save 1st Regiment. I'm going to move 9th Division out of the way, and then we're going to keep increasing the size of this gap. So, let's actually, I want to preserve my movement points. So let's have first and second attack. Lovely, 100 men and some MG-34s. Not the worst result that could have happened. We still have plenty of movement points. 
let's keep increasing this corridor. And right there, because I think we had a little extra action point for not doing the concentric attack, it completely shattered. So that regiment, that counter is done. Ninth Division will not have that regiment available anymore, and now we can keep collapsing the pocket. So I still have two in reserve. And for this guy right here, I'm actually going to use two regiments of the 32nd Infantry and keep up my action points on my armor. It's perfectly stacked at 100. Should be easy. 300 men, but we take out 700 and we shift it. And this is an interesting situation. They actually retreated into a hex of something we haven't attacked yet. Let's move up the infantry. And... I want to follow up, but what we can actually do is use other hexes. If you keep doing concentric attacks, it will increase the amount of stack to represent that you're hitting from multiple sides and the units aren't going to get in the way of each other. So I actually want to... Let's save the Panzers for tougher fighting. I'm going to throw in 3rd Panzer Division's infantry and then I'm going to throw in 2nd Motorized 3rd Regiment. You'll notice it increased our stack a little bit, but it wasn't enough. So I'm going to find my most tired infantry unit for the 32nd, pull them off. It's a closer stack. Let's see what we can do. And not bad. We lost a couple half tracks, but only a hundred men. That one unit is really bullied. They're retreating in great disarray. And we keep moving. So this game, you're basically right now what you see is what you get. It is a lot of counter pushing. You will notice I'm making a lot of clicks to do anything but it's also very intuitive i'm not checking equipment tables and things a lot i'm just kind of estimating well what does this unit look like how do we think it feels and what needs to be done now this one might be a tough nut to crack because of the artillery and the anti-air but it's got two weakened units with it i i want to shift it off i don't want it there we have two motorized options there. We have some other things going on. So I'm going to move the 20th up. And let's see what we can do. Attacking anti-air with planes is not a good idea, but I'm going to see if I can soften it up at all. At least reduce the readiness of the AA. And we did. We destroyed some AA and we actually destroyed some of the cannons. Good. Reduce some of the readiness. Reduce their entrenchment. Now. This is going to be bloody, but if I can create this big of a hole first turn, I can keep moving. Now, if I were more conservative, I would probably push these guys down here pocket it, move on with my life, but I'm pretty aggressive, I want them out, I want to make as big a hole as possible, although oh, that's tempting. Let's see what we can get with the 15th here. I'm under stack, so Panzer Lair is going to help the 32nd. Maybe I should just go around. Let's see. 200 men. Shift it off. Now, Lair's pretty small. With only 1,000 infantry, I wouldn't want it running out by itself, but it will be fine for what we need. 
third division, not quite going to reach the action this turn. That's, no, that's fine. Engineers can fight, they can take territory, but I would save them for bridge crossings and mostly building and blowing bridges. Weak artillery strike, we might not mess with that, but let's hit the weakened unit. Now Lair hitting a weak unit, something that's already lost some of its integrity should be fine. Artillery should keep them down. I think I am going to bypass what's left of the 9th. Armored train. It's not a fighting unit, but let's move it up. Let's see, we have full recon. Lovely. And yeah. You'll notice very intuitive game. I'm not fumbling around. The only... Thing I have to do is decide where and when I want to attack. Send two regiments just because I want to be able to occupy that space. And we did lose some Panzer twos on that. They did not want to go down without a fight. But... I now have this big hole blasted in. And 9th is totally surrounded, so if I do decide to attack the 9th, they have nowhere to retreat to and they would have to surrender. And actually, now it makes more sense to do that. So let's get some concentric attacks. 150. Well, don't need the armor train. And what's going to be weakest here? 85 and 91. So, I'll tell you what. Second so motorize, you get a break. I am mixing units, so I'm losing a little bit of the divisional, but I'm right on stacking. It's 2 to 1. I get some bonuses. You can click on your HQs and they show you the command range. I'm well within command range. They're within command range. Let's get our first surrenders. And so this is why I said it's a little bit of a risk. Those are 500 men that I didn't have to lose. I could have waited a turn, let them rot, but I have those counters out of there. I now have a huge gap here absolutely nothing in between and I can even move up and start threatening my first objectives at Bromberg and Grouden's I'm going to move up 19th core move up second and I'm gonna pause for here because we've been going a while but stay tuned, and I'll move the other army groups. I won't be explaining things as much. And hopefully you guys like this. Um, let me know what you think about the video, the strategy, and if you get a chance, check out Decisive Campaigns. This game is so much fun. Uh, it's great in PBEM. I mean, if you play by email, there's insane options where each of these armies can be controlled by a different player and then someone else can control the air assets and things and everybody fights and it's great but in the meantime stay tuned and i hope you